Today I'm going to show you exactly how I use ClickUp. We're also going to have a ClickUp starter guide that you can download below. I'm going to show you the basic layout. I'm going to show you how I use it to arrange and schedule my writing, schedule pretty fabulous stuff, schedule my book clubs, and I guess that's it. That's all I do, <laughs> really just write book clubs and pretty fabulous. So uh, let's just talk about how you use it for projects, how you use it for to-do lists, and I'll be honest, this is the first time that I am using this. I used to use Trello. Um, I used to use, I tried Asana once. I tried Notion. I've tried Todoist. I've tried so many different lists. Um, and this one is my favorite. So we'll talk a little bit about why I like this one the best. And then we'll just jump right into how to start using it. I'm Lisa from Pretty Fabulous, and I help online businesses create beautiful digital downloads using Adobe InDesign. So if this sounds like you or something you might be interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button below. I post new videos every Monday and Thursday, and I do unboxings on Saturday. Now I'm gonna go ahead and flip the screen so you can just see what I'm seeing. Before we dive right into the app, I think it makes more sense to go over some concepts. So I have a couple slides for you. Make sure to check the link in the description because I'm giving you these slides as well as a quick start guide. You can print that out, follow along, take notes. Um, it's free, just go ahead and do that now. Uh, so ClickUp is a mobile app, but I would highly recommend starting out on the desktop and then going to mobile. In fact, we're not even gonna go over mobile today. The interface looks completely different. It is very efficient, uh, but it does take some getting used to if you, you know, if you're not going to, if you haven't used ClickUp ever. Um, I did look at other, productivity apps that were out there. And I mentioned this in my um, March plan with me video or my April plan with me video. You know, a lot of them like Trello and Notion, I just wasted time trying to make them look pretty. And that's kind of the nature of how they're set up. Every time you put a new list out in Notion, it had an icon and then I just wanted to create the cutest icon and I want them all to look, I don't even, it's weird how it's built into the system where you like kind of feel like a failure if you don't have the prettiest Trello board with this amazing background. So I, for that reason, I don't use those. Um, it's Sana. Asana actually, I'm just gonna say Asana is broken. Like it does not keep any of my tasks. It didn't save stuff. Uh, anytime they did an update, for sure a lot of data got wiped out. I don't trust them. Um, Monday.com, it was a little expensive. I mean, it's only $12 per month per user, so we're not talking about anything that's gonna break the bank, um, but it lacked dependencies. It didn't have as many bells and whistles. Uh, Basecamp is just antiquated and really old, and I don't know why it's $99 a month. Um, I think that's because it has a lot of support. It's really meant, in my opinion, for corporate America. Now, there are a ton of other apps out there, not just this, there's Todoist. There is Wonderlist, uh, I can't even, I mean, there's a million different things. This guy, I actually really like his videos. He does a really in-depth review of all the apps that are out there, compares them, and goes through, you know, what he thinks are the shortcomings and shortfalls and the positives and the cons uh, of each of those products. So if you go to his YouTube channel, Keep Productive, you're gonna find a lot of great videos out there. Now, just to be clear, today is all about solopreneurs. So if you have T, it has a lot, all of these apps have really great features to help you work virtually with the team. I am not going to go over any of those. As you know, I just, in general, like a business philosophy, I don't have any teams um, or team members. I have people I work with. Uh, but usually on a contract basis or for a particular task, I don't have staff per se, and we don't have team meetings or any of that stuff. So uh, when we are talking about ClickUp, it is just for somebody who is managing themselves. And so we're not gonna go over any team related bells or whistle, time management, reporting, sprints, all of that are really, in my opinion, things that are geared towards teams. Instead, we're gonna talk about collaborating with people, because I do that, partnering with people that you need to communicate with on different projects, setting up email automations, how to create templates in here, and just your ongoing maintenance for yourself versus, you know, for a team and, you know, reassigning tasks. Now, you can obviously go to a ton of different videos on ClickUp, but what I found is if you go to the actual videos for ClickUp, if you go here to clickup.com slash on-demand demo, you're going to find a ton of things that have already been created by the staff at ClickUp. And then when you have a specific question on that video or something, you can actually just say, hey, you know, to that person or whatever, I saw this video and, you know. Plus the videos honestly gave me more ideas on how to use ClickUp that I wasn't even 
thinking of. Um, there are a ton of things out there, so they've done a good job of trying to keep it relevant and make it useful to people. So the first thing you need to do is you need to buy it, right? You need to sign up for it. Uh, it's free. Just so you know, anything I ever do or anything I ever review, um, I never trying to get the bargain basement. Like that's not me. I am very happy to pay whatever is needed for a high quality product. And I am not trying to just run around only using free tools. So if that's what you're trying to do, that is not, like this is not the video for you. So uh, so the different options here, they do have free. The reason free wasn't really useful is, I think it's fine if you're just gonna try it out, you don't know if you wanna use it, uh, but unlimited gives you unlimited spaces. I found that I wanted more spaces. Um, you know, I actually started out with unlimited and then I switched to business because the you can use Google single sign-on, which is just much easier. Uh, the second thing is I can have two email accounts instead of one and I'm running you know, two different businesses. And then for e I could do email templates, which I first I was like copying and pasting each email. And I was like, this is just silly. Um, I'd rather just have a template I can use. So that's what I chose. Now, the important thing to note, and I don't know if you're going to want notifications from ClickUp, but whatever email account you sign up for ClickUp with, will be the email where notifications from the system will be sent to. I don't believe, I could be wrong, but I don't think you can change where the notifications go. You can send yourself email automations, but if you don't wanna set up email automations, the system already has a ton of built-in notifications it will send to you, but it will only send them to the email address that you use to sign up for the account. Um, now, there are a ton of settings in your account. We'll review those in the tutorial. Uh, but as far as I know, you can't, you know, whatever, you, just make sure the email you have, either it's one that you have set up just for, you know, notifications from ClickUp or it's one that you check regularly regularly if you want to get reminders from this. Um, and don't worry, anything you set up aside from the email, you can always just change later. So, you know, when you first set it up, it's going to ask you for your workspace and you're going to be like, what is a workspace? <laughs> uh, don't worry, call it what I call mine, Seifert ClickUp Notifications. That's the name of my workspace because when those emails come over, those notification emails, it says like what the I believe who it's from. And then instead of saying like your name, um, this way it can just say C for, uh, you know, click space note. So I know exactly what it's, what it is and where it's coming from. Uh, the second thing is I do everything on paper. So if you just start trying to type out all of your projects inside of ClickUp, I promise you will get stuck. That's that what, ha that a hundred percent happened to me. I was trying to put everything in there originally using it like paper and pencil. It didn't work. So I went back, I just wrote things out of my to-do list, I organized them on paper, and then when I went on to ClickUp, it went way faster. So over here, you're going to pull together, if you remember from uh, when we did the January plan with me, I told everyone to create a 2021 wish list. So I actually went through my wish list and put those things in, um, you know, gather all your projects, gather all the due dates, um, you know, get your paper planner out or your Google calendar planner and get those ready to go. And then you're going to group everything together because when we enter this into ClickUp, you're going to have to group stuff together either by projects, by books, um, by collaborations, by courses, by daily tasks. I'll show you how I did it. But however you have it grouped together now is probably the most logical way for you to put it into ClickUp, if that makes sense. So like, for example, Pretty Fabulous is usually one to-do list on its own. You know, Lisa um, Lisa Seifert book stuff is one to-do list on its own, etc. So uh, definitely paper first. Uh, make sure you have all your dates. So here are the three dates that you really need. You need a start date for the project. And this is really for notifications because the start date will send you a notification, hey, this project is kicking off. Um, you need a due date, so it'll send you reminders about the, the end date that you need this done by. And then you can put in milestone dates. Now, I actually don't use milestone dates, but if that's something important for you, you can put that in. Um, I think I might use milestone dates for my novel because on certain dates I need to have things done by. Um, and then determine dependencies. So if you've never worked with dependencies, any project like a Gantt chart it'll show you like this a has to happen before step B which has to happen before step C and so the easiest way for me to think about this is if you want to bake a cake you can't bake a cake if you don't have ingredients right like isn't it the worst when you go to bake a cake you're mixing your ingredients from the box and all of a sudden it says you need an egg and you're like oh 
there are no eggs in my fridge. I totally, and then you're like scrounging around and you're like, what can substitute an egg? And you're like, I don't have any of those things laying around either. Anyways, so you can't bake a cake without ingredients and you can't make a grocery list until you choose a recipe first, right? Like, are you making brownies? Are you making cupcakes? Are you making cookies? Um, so, you know, just try to gather all that ahead of time and we'll, I'll show you how to program that into ClickUp. Also select icons. Now this is the only place you need to select icons. So if you have a major project, you're going to be able to see all your projects lined up on a list inside of ClickUp. And there is like the teeniest, tiniest, like not even larger than your fingernail uh, size for a, an image. So make sure it's like a favicon, right? Like it's, it's something super tiny uh, that's recognizable. Something with a lot of detail will just look like, you know, mush basically on the screen. So, um, or if for each project, what I would do, cause I did waste time on this. I told you anytime I have to make something look pretty, it like is a time suck, but definitely make sure to choose a color and a letter, right? So, you know, if every project you have says project this, you know, project starlight, project uh, blue moon, pro project uh, purple, I don't know, purple fingernail polish. So all of those things will have P's. So make sure you choose a letter to designate in your mind quickly what something is. Um, don't worry, this is the only time you'll have to do an aesthetic like this, but just gather everything. And it's a square image uh, and don't get anything that has, uh, what's it called? Um, that's transparent because if you have a transparent image, it'll just look like a big black blob. Like it won't be anything recognizable inside of ClickUp. Now, uh, team, don't freak out, but when you sign up, it has a workspace or sometimes it says team, it, like uses this interchangeably. This is just a term in ClickUp. This doesn't actually mean like a team of people. Uh, so just know that if you have a team level, you can have multiple teams inside of ClickUp. But if I had, um, like I, right now I just have Team Lisa, I think. But if I was ever going to start working with people again, I would create a whole new team because each team cannot see into another team. Like it's almost like there is a, there's a wall up and you can't share tasks or anything else in between things. And that way you don't have to worry about anything personal accidentally being shared with you know, a new person that you bring in if you don't set up the permissions correctly, especially because we're setting this up as a solopreneur and just kind of with the thought that it's just going to be us. Now, out of scope, I'm not going to, like I mentioned, we're not going to talk about any, any of this stuff. Um, I went over this a little bit yesterday, so I'll go over this really quickly, but all tasks need a status. So you cannot uh, put anything inside of here until it has a status. Now, what does that mean? So to me, the, what I've done is I've done a status where I just set it up where I have an idea, something's in progress and it's done. It's really simple. They have some crazy statuses in here where there's like seven or eight different, you know, statuses. I don't have time to update that and it's just me. This is really more when you have all those statuses, it's when you're working on a team and you're trying to communicate to everybody, like don't even worry about that. Um, it also, you can trigger different notifications depending on the status. So just think about that. Like if you have um, a status that you wanna make sure notes go out to a particular team member or not team member, like somebody you're collaborating with, then you can add a different type of status for that. Now, the next thing is a view. So when you're in there, you can have a typical view where it's just a big list like Asana. Um, you can have boards just like Trello. You can have uh, all of your tasks will be in a Google calendar, or you can have a Gantt chart if you're used to using Microsoft projects. So don't worry about these. It's You don't have to make a decision. The only decision you have to make when you make a new project is a default view. So right now, mine are defaulted, I think, to boards. I like the board view, especially because mine's so simple. There's only three. The boards are determined by your status. So I have idea, in progress, and done, and that's it. Um, you know, if you don't have a lot of things or you don't like that board view, you can change it to whatever, whatever you want. So really important over here is how the hierarchy is in ClickUp. It goes teams, then spaces, then folders, then lists, then tasks and subtasks. And I will show you that inside of there and it'll make more sense. Now, 
a couple of things I've learned since setting this up is don't use the default status. Like I said, there's too many, there's too many. It takes forever. Oh, make up your own colors as well. So they have some pretty, I don't know, just not pretty colors combinations in there. So like for me, an idea is blue in progress is a bright pink and done is green. Um, so decide your colors right now before we get in there. Another thing is you can make everything a template. So I created my own status template, which is called Lisa Kanban. And I'll show you that inside of there. Now, now in the statuses, you have to have a beginning and end status. So no matter what, uh, there's a default for beginning, like as soon as you put something into ClickUp, that's the status. You can call it whatever you want. I called mine idea. Um, I don't know. I I'm not sure what their default is. And then end is, uh, you know, I just put mine as done. Um, but those two are required. You have to either use what they have as the default or rename them. And also you can change the colors on those two. So automation, so this is really important because I created all these checklists and then I went to go email, to create email automations and emails do not include checklists. They only include tasks and task descriptions and I think subtasks and task ID and stuff like that. So if there is something you want to automatically communicate out to a team member, put it into the task description or the task name because otherwise nothing else will be included. Um, all right, so now we're ready. We're done with the slides. Um, I'm going to show you how I set mine up. Uh, and again, this is just my initial setup. I might change my mind. And if I do, I will let you know. Um, but just based on the limited knowledge I have of ClickUp from the last, uh, I guess, three days or four days, uh, this is how I set it up. So it's pretty easy. It has a slow or a quick, um, what am I trying to say? It has a short learning curve. It is not like rocket science. So uh, I think if you try to do all the team aspects, it is a little bit more like rocket science and can be confusing. So here's what we're going to do when we go in. I'm going to sign up for ClickUp with a new account so you can see what that looks like. We're going to go in. We're going to change a lot of account settings. We're going to create a space together. We're going to create a folder. We're going to create all those things together so you can see how that looks. And then I'm going to show you how to create templates. So out of all the things that you created so that you can reuse them over and over again, I'll show you how to use those. Um, and then we'll talk about automation in case you want to send emails out to somebody and then click up inbox, uh, which I don't even think they call it inbox anymore. I think this is an old document that I had, but it, it's your at the very top left, you'll see a home. So I'll show you how to use that uh, ongoing. Now, this page right here, the click up hierarchy, print this out. <laughs> uh, print this out and have it ready whenever you're working with click up because it took me a like a few days where I was like, wait, what's a list? Wait, what comes first? A folder, a list, a space? Like it was, it, these are the click up words that they like to use. Um, and you know, it's quite honestly, spaces, uh, folders and lists are synonymous with each other, tasks and subtasks. I mean, I don't even know if you need subtasks, same thing with checklists. So again, um, just keep this over to the side so you can take notes. All right, let's go ahead and go into ClickUp. The first thing you're going to do is go to clickup.com and you're going to hit the sign up button. I know, super difficult. Remember, like I said, this is the email address that you will have for everything. So we're going to use pretty fabulous designs at gmail.com. Uh, first name is our full name is pretty fabulous. Uh, and then password. You can enter obviously whatever you want and then you can do play with ClickUp. Ignore the sign up with single uh, sign on. It's just like a trick to get you to upgrade to the business, which you probably might not be ready for yet. I mean, if you are definitely go for it, but otherwise just ignore that. And it's going to email you a verification code and it looks like a form. So remember I said you can change this to whatever you want. Uh, so I always change this because this is where your ClickUp notifications are going to come from. So I just call it the, um, the PF uh, ClickUp, ClickUp notification. That's the name of the workspace. Remember, you're a solopreneur, it's just you. So no one else needs to know this. Oh, the avatar, you can drop an image in here if you want, but you don't have to. So if I wanted to, I could drop in my little pretty fabulous. Try to size that up. I think you can move this around. Yeah, there we go. And just hit save. 
So I could say I'm happy so far. Choose your favorite color theme. I don't know if this matters. I mean, my new color is blue, so we'll select that. Um, it's kind of a dull blue. Do I really like that? I don't think I like that. I think I still like pink, so I'm going to go with pink. How many people were working? Just me. Um, it doesn't even matter. Uh, how did you hear about us? Doesn't matter again. Uh, customize who you work by enabling click apps. So priorities, tags, custom fields. Multiple. Okay, so we don't need multiple assignees. Um, I guess I could leave priorities. I honestly don't even use this. I do use tags, so I would leave that in there. Um, custom fields. This is actually, I believe this is a business um, upgrade, but we'll just leave it in there. I'm not going to do any of these other things because that would take too long. Uh, do you want to import tasks? So if you have a Sana, Trello, or whatever, you can import them in here. I actually would advise against it just because it's not going to show up how you want. It's going to, I think it takes more time than it's worth to try to rearrange stuff. So um, that's my opinion, but you could try it. Uh, and then I don't even know if you can undo, you can undo it. You can just delete stuff you don't like. So now we're ready to go ahead and get started and click up. All right, so there is this little intro video. We're not gonna watch that because you have me. Um, and then they have templates. So we're gonna skip all of that. Uh, this space is empty, create a list to get started. Okay, that's actually counterintuitive. You don't need to create a list to get started. Um, so what we're gonna do is this is our home. You can see that nothing's in here, but this is where we're gonna come at the end when we're done. So we are actually going to go over and set up your settings first. So here at the very bottom left, you are gonna see your PF, Pretty Fabulous ClickUp Notifications, which is what we called it before. So we're gonna go over here to settings. Um, and inside of here, so this white label, don't worry about this. This again, there's little things that are like tricks. They're like, oh, do you want to do that option? Okay, great, upgrade. <laughs> so just ignore that. Um, over here, again, it's just you. Uh, teams, same thing, doesn't really apply to us. Uh, so we are going to ignore all of these. These aren't really important right now. I know what you're thinking. I usually, the first thing I go to is integrations, but all of these integrations are really set up for someone who needs to work with a ton of other people. Um, so I wouldn't really worry about that. If you're gonna set some automations up there for let's say something to work with another app uh, based on a certain day, you could try Zap and see what Zaps are in there. Um, this is if you want to upgrade your account. Now, anything that you delete will show up here in trash, and then you have 30 days to change your mind, basically, on this. Uh, again, you don't have single sign on provider because you have to be business, and then to get all these things, you need enterprise. So we're going to go down here to my settings. You can change your password. Oh, I guess you can change your email if you feel like it. Uh, over here, uh, you could get a text each time you log in. Again, this is just like if you really, really are worried about like if you have, I don't have any sensitive data in here. Um, in fact, I would probably recommend not keeping sensitive data in here just because you never know. I feel like I get notifications or I see things on the mail all the time where they're like, sorry, we've been hacked. Your, your account may or may not have been compromised. We have no idea. Um, all right, so I am on the West Coast. Uh, I like the week to start on Sunday. I like 12 hours. I don't like military time. Um, date, I like this MDW format. And then over here, uh, so this is, this is just a little flyout on the right. So Mighty Networks has that too. I actually really like that. So I'm gonna leave that in there. Um, the same thing, don't, I would just leave the defaults for all of these. Hotkeys, don't worry about that too much. Um, notepad, in theory, this is a cute thing. Um, I haven't actually used it. So Notepad is a new feature inside of here. So if you have obviously a note or an idea or something you wanna research, but you don't wanna really commit it to a task or a list or a folder yet, you can put it in the Notepad. Um, this just, I think this just changes how things look. High contrast mode, dark mode, um, no idea what global font. Uh, that I ever need that um, show celebration. So this is cute. It shows like a little confetti when you're done with something. Um, sync data for offline mode. You can try this again. After my whole experience with Asana, I don't even try things with offline mode. So go ahead, uh, save your changes. Workspace, again, remember I told you you could change this if you wanted to. Um, and again, workspace is only, the only reason I would add another workspace is if you are going to add a group 
of tasks that you don't want anyone else to see. Over here, notifications. So inside of here, this is where you wanna make some changes. So you don't want your inbox to be like flooded with everything that you're getting. And this is really just important, I think, uh, in, oh, here, do you want to enable browser notifications? So if you want to say yes, if you, if it bothers you, I would just say later, um, just because I don't like to be interrupted when I'm working on something, especially if I'm filming something like this, uh, also assign comments. So again, this really only applies to people who are in teams. So I'm just going to unclick everything, um, resolved again, like I'm going to get a note that I resolve something with myself. <laughs> so, uh, all of these, all of these things again, are really just meant for somebody who is working with a team of other people. Um, I leave this, don't notify me when new tasks are created. Cause that would be crazy town. Um, so let's turn off that assign any changes again all of these things i would turn off because you're the one making these changes or assigning tasks to yourself you don't need to know about that um so i would just get rid of all of these attachment changes yeah like you don't need to know that you're the only one making changes <laughs> so um so basically, you're pretty much going to unselect everything in this whole thing. So over here, start due dates. Now, these you might want to keep. So when something's due, I do want email. I want all of these notifications um, when something's overdue. So you can also get notifications before something starts. Um, like, let's say I want a reminder a day before because, like, what's the point in telling me, like, right then if something starts at, you know, if I'm going to get an email five minutes before at 11.55 p.m., I'm asleep. That's really not going to help. So a day before, um, I would say two days before something's due, all overdue reminders. Um, I would say one day after due date, email summary. Yeah. So again, start date changes. I don't need to know when the start date changes because I'm the one that changed it. Um, all right. So click apps, priority changed again wouldn't worry about any of this stuff at all uh integrations same thing um i don't need to know when i mention in something because i'm probably not going to mention myself to myself because that would be crazy um and same thing chats you're probably not going to have chats with yourself inside of this app uh, you're probably not going to give yourself emojis <laughs> I mean, if you do, that's great. I just wouldn't have time. Um, inbox reminders. This is your inbox, not for your email. This is your inbox for ClickUp. Um, I would just say no to all of that. Uh, same thing with sharing. And turn all of this off because you're going to know if you shared something. Okay, so that is pretty much it. Now, as far as I know, there's no save button on here. I think it just kind of takes all of your changes at the time you do it. Yeah. So everything is saved as all of our changes. And that's pretty much it for the actual settings on setting everything up. So all right, let's go into spaces because we're going to create our first space. So you can see this little S for space. They've already defaulted and created a space for you. So over here, when it goes add new, the only thing you can add new is a space. So if I add a new space, I could call this um, write book. And see, it uses, like I said, you have to pick a letter or you have to pick an icon. You can upload, you know, whatever image you want here, but it's itty bitty teeny tiny on the left. So we're just gonna make this blue so it's different from that one. Who is this space for? Again, don't worry about private uh because again you are just using this for yourself just keep everything inside your click up notifications uh now here is where i told you to figure out what your task uh statuses are so you have to assign status ability to every single thing so when you look here um so this isn't too bad open in progress closed uh kanban there's some other stuff content there's a ton of stuff uh, again, these to me are things that are helpful when you're working with the team or other people. Um, you can create, let's just go ahead and create, because it's normal to just choose one of these, but we're going to go ahead and create one. And so, like I said, there's a beginning and end that you have to do. So we're going to say concept, idea, or whatever. I want to change this color to, let's say, a light blue. 
I want to add another status to say uh, outlining. And then I will change this to purple. I want another status that says rough draft. And I'll change this to orange. I'll add another status that says uh, revising. And I'll change this to yellow. I'll add another status that says um, proofread. And I will make this one red. Uh, and then over here, we will just say uh, analyzed. And I'll just leave that green. So what I want to do now is I, before I say next, I'm going to say new template. And I want to save this as my Lisa writing template. And the reason I say Lisa is because that way on the left, I can automatically see that this is a custom one and not something, you know, that came with ClickUp. So over here, these are the apps that are inside of here. I don't really need multiple assignees. <laughs> Custom fields, do I need it? Probably not. Definitely don't need time tracking. If you say show more, there's a bunch of other things. Again, if we're gonna do dependencies, um, I guess we'll leave that in, in case there's something we wanna do. Now, here's the views. You can have all of these views. You can toggle every single one of these views on if you would like. Uh, so that they're available later. And don't worry if you don't toggle them on now, you can always add them later. Uh, but you do have to pick one as your default view. So let's say I like, really like the board, so I'm gonna make this my default by selecting that here. And then over here, it says, I think the previous step said review space. Um, so now I can see everything that I've set up and I'm gonna go ahead and create that space. So now we have our space. Like I said, I set this up as boards, so it looks just like Trello with those boards at the top. Um, scratch, start from scratch or inherit statuses and views from space. Obviously, this space is generic. I didn't do anything, so I'm just going to close that out. We're going to ignore that. Now, the next thing I said, remember if I told you to keep your handy dandy sheet available, is we're going to create a folder. So over here, and you don't have to create a folder. You could actually create instead a um, a list. So you can create a folder or a list. So the way I decide is if I have something, if I have a lot of projects within a space, like let's say I'm writing multiple books, I will give them each their own folder just so it helps me and my mind differentiate them. But honestly, I could have just as easily given them, them a list. Uh, here's where the difference is. If I don't have, if I have multiple things I have to do for one book, then I will have a folder. If I don't, if I just need to write the book and that's it, then I would have a list. I don't know if that's helpful, but uh, we're gonna create a folder because I wanted to show you how to do that. So the folder is going to be called, I don't even know what the next book, oh, the next book is Bullets, um, no, Buttercream and Bullets, book number four in the Frosted Misfortunes Mysteries. That's my next book. So here's what we're doing. Who are you gonna share this book with? It doesn't matter. Who cares? I just say share it with whoever because um, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Again, like I said, it's just a, it's you by yourself. Uh, task statuses, it's going to inherit those other task statuses. Um, do I want to make a list for this? I'm not really ready to make a list for this, so I'm just going to say okay. I could have used a template if I wanted. There are a lot of predefined templates inside of here created by ClickUp. I would highly advise against using all of these. I know it sounds so easy. You're like, that's gonna be so great. These templates, in my opinion, were just awful. So just ignore them and don't use them. All right, so create folder. Again, it's gonna ask if you wanna inherit statuses, say apply. Um, so inside of here, you can see now I have a list. If I want to, I can go back to my board view uh, or I can stay in list view. I can do a calendar, I can do Gantt. I can do timelines, activities, workload, mind map, table, et cetera, et cetera. So the things you see here at the top when we first set up spaces is what you're gonna see over here. So let's go back to, I like putting things in lists when I'm thinking about them. Um, so this is a task, but maybe I need different lists. So inside of here, I'm gonna hit the plus sign again, and I'm gonna make a new list inside of here. And this is going to be called drafting the book, the novel. And then I need another list and see, it gives you a default. So you might as well just use the default that's in here. And like we said, I had already opted in for that pop-up instead of having it to the side. 
Um, so over here, I'm gonna hit the, I don't know why you have to hit the pencil to rename this, but I'm gonna call this publishing the novel and I'm gonna hit return. Um, and then I'm going to go back to the list. So now I have publishing, drafting, and now I need to add another list inside of this folder. And I'm going to call this marketing. Um, marketing the novel. Create the list. Okay, so these obviously aren't in logical order. Um, so I probably want to move this. It's really easy just to move this to drafting, publishing, and then I'm going to market the book. Because you can't market a book, you don't have. So we're going to apply all of these to this. So drafting, I'm going to say that I need to create a character list. So this is now my task. Um, I need to create setting description. I need to um, write the plot, right? Like all these different things that I need to do. So let's go into any of these ideas and you can move these around just like you can in Trello. Um, and you can move it back. So let's go into create character list. Here are the dates here at the top right. So I, let's say I want to start this on the 5th and I expect this to be done by the 7th. So that's that's when it's going to happen. Obviously I can add a recurring task if I need to do this multiple times, but for this I really don't. So I'm just going to go ahead and close it out. Now if I have anything I want, anybody I want to send this to, then I'm going to put all of my, this is the task description create a character, the main character profiles, right? So that's how that would work. Um, over here at the bottom is a to-do list. So do I need this to-do list? I do not need this to-do list. Over here are subtasks within there. So this is a task, create character list. Um, and over here I could create another task, uh, maybe main character uh, subtask is uh, is the antagonist another subtask is um, family members right if i need to write profiles for them whatever it is so i could put all of these inside of here and then within each of these i can i could actually set priorities and due dates for all of these so i want to get that granular over here i can add a checklist so hair color eye color, um, job, age, height, right? So all of those things that you normally think of. Now let's say I actually don't want to, I want to do this for like four other novels. So what I can do over here is I can save this checklist as a template. So I can just right click those three dots, say save as a template and say character checklist items. And I always say everyone, again, like I said, because it doesn't matter, it's just I'm a team of one, I'll save that template. So now next time I wanna add a checklist, I can also just see this option here, which says use template. If I click that, I can see my template and I can say quick create, and it will create that template, that checklist again. So now I have two uh, checklists. So I obviously don't need two checklists, so I'll just delete one of these. And you can name those checklists. So like this checklist is called character checklist items because that's what I called it before. All right, let's go ahead. Um, so this is everything. So let's say you would now like to, so we've created everything, right? A space, a folder, a list, task, subtask, checklist, right? We've created templates. Um, now, we're gonna, before we create emails, I'm gonna show you how to do automations. So we're gonna skip over here. So at the top, so at the top right, you're gonna see automate. So we're actually back in my own um, personal uh, space for ClickUp that I've already set up because you're gonna to have to do a paid plan in order to set up that email notification. So like I said, I'm on the business plan and inside of here, let's say I just wanna send out an email. Uh, so I'm gonna to go to automations. Um, here and I'm gonna say add automation. So we're gonna go ahead and add an automation. Uh, we're gonna to go to email down here at the bottom and we'll say when due date arrives, and I have two accounts, so from Lisa at Pretty Fabulous Designs, I'm gonna send an email to, um, I don't even know, Lisa London Author, that's another one of my email addresses, at gmail.com. And so here in the subject, I have all these options, right? And so I'm gonna say task name is the subject. And then over here in the body, it'll say, hi there, um, 
it's time to start working on our project. We're at step, and I'll just insert the task name. Um, oops, that is the wrong place. Sorry, I'll insert the task name. I have to pull it from down here. Uh, and it includes the following items. And remember, I told you you can only include things in the task description, so we'll add that here. So you'll see what you can include. You can just add dates, and that's pretty much it, assignees, and so that's why I have made this so that you can only add, I have everything I need in the task description. So now I can add a signature. So I have a couple different signatures inside of there. I'm gonna add my Lisa Seifert uh, books signature, and then you don't have to do a signature every time. And then I'm gonna go ahead and say create. So what does this mean? So I put the automation, see where I have it selected, at the club level. So at the club level, this email will go out every time that uh, particular automation is triggered. So it says two act automations. There's actually three. Sometimes it doesn't refresh. Um, so when a due date arrives, when a start date arrives. And so I can see that all of these have dates. This is a start date. This is a due date. Start date, due date, start date, due date. And that's what will trigger when these emails go out. Now, where did I create those email templates? You can go to Template Center and I believe these are just, I don't think these are my email templates. These are just some of the email, the templates that I set up that I showed you how to do already. Uh, so you're gonna have to go into your account, go to settings, go over here to um, integrations, and I think inside of email. Yeah, so email, you can create those signatures inside of here. I could add a new signature over here and just say test signature. And over here, I could say, you can make it changes. This is my amazing signature. And I can make that bold. I could, oops, I could, I guess I can make that italic. I can make this bold. I can make this pink. Um, I can add text background. I can format it. All these cool things. Um, over here, I think this is where I can, nope, that's not true. So say this is where I add, oh here, the plus. This is where you can add an image, I can add a divider, a table, I can embed a YouTube video if I want um, into that email. So lots of cool things you can do with your templates and then over here, or with signatures, and then over here I can create an email template and I can call this the, I don't know, ready to edit template so I know what it is. Subject, um, it's time to edit my novel. And then email content, if I know what I wanna say, hi there, my fabulous uh, editor. Um, it's time to, and then I don't have those things up here, it's just kind of like the beginning of the email and I'll just say create. And then that way I have like the beginning so I can I have, in theory, less editing when I go inside to set up those automations. So that is everything. I'll show you my workspace and how I set things up. So basically I have personal, which I haven't really done anything with. I put one folder in there for bills. I have rent, credit cards, IRS quarterly tax payments. Um, it's really personal wise. That's the only thing I need to like manage myself to keep on top of. That's a picture of Lucky. As I said, these pictures are super teeny tiny. Um, here's Paracosi Book Club. So I have three projects inside of here. So I created folders. There's the monthly book club. So we do book choices. I have things I have to do uh, afterwards. So you can see for book choices, I made this a calendar view as the default. And over here, I made this a board view. So you can change these really easily by just going here to the top when you see your options. And once you click a different view, you can just click the three ellipses next to it and say default for everyone. So now it's a list. Or if I wanna change, go back to a board, I can say default for everyone and that's the new default. Um, all right, so what else did I do? Website, I know I have to create page content, uh, and inside of there I know I have the blog page, the about page, the shop, but clearly I haven't done any of these. These are all open. Um, advertising, I've done nothing. I haven't even 
set up uh yeah nothing's been done <laughs> so and then i kind of repeated everything here in the paracosi so the nice thing about this is i was able to create these templates and then just reuse them over here um, over in youtube i have lists uh, i don't have folders and the way you can tell really easily is you can see a folder <laughs> and so over here there's no folder so you know by default it's a list um, so filming schedule I have channel optimization, lead magnets I need to start. Oh, I've actually already done this. So if I wanna change the status, um, what you could do is you could, first of all, you can open this up and to change the status, you can just kind of move things through over here to done and now it's done. So if I go to board view, I can only see it over there because I believe list view only shows you things that are open. Um, nope, I can change it to say show closed as well. So whichever one I want to do, um, and I'll make this the default, the board view. All right, so I have, inside of writing, I have lists. So I have a bunch of, I have marketing stuff I need to do. I have the car thief, I have the tea cozy. Um, so these are just all the books that I'm working on. And then over here is recurring charges. So I always, I don't know about you guys, but like, I'm always surprised. I don't know why, but just all the things that, uh, the auto renewals that show up. So if I go inside of here um, and I just want to see everything, this makes more sense to just see as a list. So I have things that I have lifetime access to, which sometimes I honestly forget what I've purchased, uh, annual renewals. And so in here I can see at a glance when these things are going to renew and how much it's going to cost me. And then things that I want to cancel that I just really didn't get any value out of. Um, so I put due dates in there because I just want to make sure I don't pay for another year of it. And I have to add a due date over here. So it's really easy to add a due date. You just go here and you can select something, but I don't know what that is. So, uh, and then I have monthly renewals. So for the statuses for these, I have purchase, purchase, which is, you know, it's kind of done. Red is like, get rid of it. And then to be reviewed is again, like these are monthly charges. So I do, I want this monthly charge. Like, I feel like I should review those on a monthly basis to see if I want to, to keep paying that monthly fee. Um, affiliate marketing, um, current affiliate brands. I didn't finish doing all of this. Sometimes I forget which brands I'm affiliated with and I don't have the links. So I am just need to be more organized. So pretty fabulous. What I did is I just created lists. Uh, and again, it just helps me because here over here, these are folders. Um, you can, you know, accordion those up so you don't see everything but for me for pretty fabulous i just want to see lists of everything that i know i need to do i haven't added any dates here same thing planner academy i have oh this is a list that's that default list it creates so we're going to delete that uh so you have modules so i know all the modules i need to create all the bonuses i need to create fast acting bonuses i need to put together Wedding Invitation Academy, that's that new course. I haven't done the sales page yet. Um, here are the modules I need to create. Here are all the bonuses. Oh, I haven't even written the bonuses. So let's say, so if we look at modules, you can see that there's no due dates, right? So I could go individually one by one and do that, and that would take me probably forever. Instead, what I could do is I can go over here to home and I could see everything that is coming up next. So here's some overdue tasks, there's nothing. Um, here are things that have dates, and then probably the most important part is things that are unscheduled. So dailies, like I know I want to update that at some point. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and even though it says change date, I mean, it's changing it from no date to a date because it's in the unscheduled section. So I know that I wanna release those, let's say on the 13th. Right. And then monthlies, I know I want to release those on maybe, let's say, the 15th. Give myself a two day buffer. You know, weeklies, I want to release those on the 20th. Uh, annuals, I want to release those on the 22nd or whatever. So then I can go through each and every one of these one by one and start giving everything a due date. So then I know for sure nothing gets missed. So what did you think? Do you like ClickUp enough to try it? Make sure to download the quick start guide because it'll show you exactly like how I use it, what all the different tools are, how to get started. And yeah, hopefully you can be up and running with it. And again, I've tried these in the past, so don't feel bad if you don't like them. Like I've tried managing myself with Basecamp and uh, 
Todoist and Trello, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, so, you know, I kind of feel like it's like a planner. Sometimes you use them every day religiously, and then other times you're like, you know, I'm just going to use it to help me plan or check in mid-month. Um, so you shouldn't feel like a failure, I guess is what I'm saying, if you don't use it all the time. Uh, as long as you use it sometimes, that should be good enough. <laughs> all right. I hope everyone's having a fabulous day, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.